Here we're going to be looking at a periodic inventory system or accounting for periodic inventory and we're just going to be looking at the basics here. So for a periodic inventory uh, system that's where you determine the quantity of inventory you have on hand only periodically or at the end of the period here. So for example here we're going to have some transactions where we have a beginning inventory amount here of $1,200, purchases for the period here at $10,800 and then sales for the period here $14,400. Uh, $14, $400 and then we have ending inventory here of $4,800. Now with this periodic inventory uh, method here this is key here this ending inventory. So to record our sales here we would credit our sales revenue account here on the income statement for $14,400 and then back on our balance sheet we would uh, debit our accounts receivable here for $14,400 assuming they were all sold on account here. So the next thing we have to do is we have to determine the inventory costs for the sales that we've made here. So we have to, uh, this is how we do it with this periodic inventory method. We have a periodic inventory account here and then we have this purchases account that we set up with the periodic method here. So what we do with this, this purchases account here, let's look at that. All the purchases of the inventory during the accounting period have to be assigned here or recorded in this purchases account. So in this case here we would have debited our purchases account here for $10,800. That was the amount of purchases that were made during the period. And then at the end of the period here when we're going to have to calculate our inventory costs, we would credit out this total amount of purchases for the period here, or reduce our purchases account here to zero of 10,000. We credit $10,800 in our purchases account and then we would, the debit amount here would be moved into the periodic or inventory account here for $10,800. Now to determine the amount of our inventory cost for the sales here. This is how we do that here and we're going to have it at $7,200. So we know what our ending inventory is at $4,800. We know what our beginning inventory was here and then we know what the purchases for the period are. So let's go look at our calculations here. Beginning inventory was $1,200. Purchases for the period $10,800. So adding those two amounts together we get the uh, uh, goods available for sale here of $12,000. Now we would subtract out our ending inventory here of $4,800 and that gives us our cost of goods sold here for the period at $7,200. So then uh, looking at our inventory account here we would credit out our uh, $7,200 worth of inventory that we determined to be our cost of goods sold based on those sales and this is again based at a uh, uh, calculation that's made here at the end of the period or at the end of the period. We don't do that for each and every sale. We only do it at the end of the period or periodically here. So uh, credit our periodic inventory for $7,200 and then we would debit or increase our cost of goods sold for those sales here of $7,200. Uh, one other thing here when I had our purchases account I guess I forgot to mention here that what we debited our purchase here for $10,800 and then the associated credit amount here would go to our accounts payable here for $10,800 assuming everything we bought on account here. So let's go back and look at our cost of goods sold just to backtrack what we've done here and look at the definitions here. So for our cost of goods sold, to compute the cost of goods sold, the company subtracts the ending inventory which we did from the cost of goods available for sale. So let's uh, redefine what our cost of goods available for sale was again. So you add the total in the purchases account which we did here at the end of the accounting period to the cost of the inventory on hand at the beginning of the period here. That is we do. This sum determines the total cost of goods available for sale during the period here. So let's go back up to this our inventory account here. That's just here to review that again. The beginning inventory amount here that we had we recorded here in our periodic inventory account of $12,800 and then the $10,800 that was the amount of purchases for the period here. So uh, what we do is we add those two amounts together and subtract out our $4,800 worth of ending inventory that we've got here and that gives us the difference here gives us $7,200 worth of inventory that would be charging off against those sales and then the credit here to the periodic inventory for $7,200 the associated uh, that would be a debit amount here at core to our cost of goods sold here for $7,200. Now there's one other thing that we want to look here that this cost of goods sold 
when you have inventory accounting you're going to have some overages or shortages here and with the perpetual inventory system we actually do a physical count here and we have to adjust our inventory records but with the periodic inventory method we have no records to adjust them again so let's so we we really can't go and adjust our inventory account here for any shortages or overages. We have to bury our cost right here in the cost of goods sold. Whatever is coming out of periodic inventory here goes into our cost of goods sold account. So let's just go up and look at that again here. Now, again, uh, normally you have some inventory gains or losses or inventory over and short for any losses here on your inventory or gains on your inventory that you may have here and that's where you've done a physical count now you use that with the perpetual inventory method they take a physical count and then they adjust their inventory book amount here against that physical count but with the periodic inventory you do does not use this inventory over and short account since there are no records to compare to physical count to. So the costs of for any overages or shortages in inventory are uh, included here in the cost of goods sold account. So here's where all our any our overages or shortages for inventory they are already included in our cost of goods sold account here. So again here let's just review this periodic inventory method again here. We take the to determine our cost of goods sold for the period and that's only done at the end of the period here that isn't done for each and every sale that's only done periodically or end of the period or in let's just say monthly this every six months or at least yearly here we have to determine what our periodic inventory is you take the beginning balance here in the inventory account and then the purchases for the period that we brought up here from our purchases account all the purchases are for the period are recorded in a purchases account and then they're closed out and moved up into this inventory account in this case we had ten thousand eight hundred dollars twelve twelve hundred beginning inventory amount and then the key here is we have to know what our ending inventory is and we're given that in this problem is forty eight hundred dollars so the difference between our beginning inventory plus our purchases for the period minus our ending inventory gives us the inventory cost that we have for those sales here that uh, in this case it was seventy two hundred dollars and then I remember our sales that was the total amount here for the period or let's just say for the year in this example and then the difference here in our periodic inventory account of seventy two hundred dollars gets moved over and recognizes our cost of goods sold here and of course our cost of goods sold reduces our sales revenue and then uh, just remember here when we're doing our periodic inventory we do don't go up and use any do any physical count here well we we will do a physical count but we're in this example the basic example here we're just base bearing our cost of goods sold right in the sales uh, in our cost of goods sold account here for any overages or shortages on those inventories and that's that's how we would handle here uh, our periodic using our periodic inventory method here to determine the cost of goods sold for the sales that we made for the period.